It was January 2014, and I was living in Darwin, Australia, with a couple of friends. It had been an uneventful Tuesday evening and I went to sleep as normal, around midnight. I was living in an older style house, which, for ventilation, had a gap of about 45 centimeters between the internal walls and the roof. I woke up at about 2 a.m. and realized I couldn't hear in one ear. I was sleepy and perplexed, but I knew something was in there. It was hard to know what it was my finger didn't go in far enough to make contact, but it felt like the inside of my ear had swollen up. I later learned that a 2 cm bush cockroach had flown over the top of my wall. My ceiling fan probably blew it straight onto my head and I must have brushed the side of my face with my hand, which scared it. I assume it looked for somewhere to hide, and ran straight into my right ear. Cockroaches, I've since learned, can't move backwards. It was pretty big, so it would NT have had room to move, most of its legs would have been pinned against its body in my ear canal. Its only option was to move forward, so it clawed further and burrowing deeper with its mouth it was scratching and chewing on my eardrum. It was excruciatingly painful, like someone sticking a knitting needle in your ear then tapping on it. I knew something was seriously wrong. I suspected it was an insect, but when it stopped burrowing, the pain went away. I had to be at work, at a scaffolding warehouse, in four hours, so I lay back down. But within 1,520 minutes it started burrowing again. That happened again and again, and each time the pain got worse. I shook my head to try to get it out. That didn't do anything. Then I got the vacuum cleaner and held the nozzle against my ear to try to suck out whatever it was. That didn't work either. The more I irritated the thing in my ear, the more pain it caused me. Then I thought he'll flush it out. I put my head in the sink, and filled my ear up with water, but that irritated the bug more than anything. The pain crippled me. I dropped to a fetal position and my muscles started going into spasms. There was a shrill tension inside my head. I was gritting my teeth too hard to cry. I knew I had to go to hospital and woke my housemate, Stuart. This was at about 4.30 a.m. We got to the emergency department of the Royal Darwin Hospital and I described the pain I was experiencing. I said it'd wait as long as I could, but that in 15 minutes, this thing was going to start burrowing again, and it'd be twitching on the floor. They saw me within five minutes. A doctor examined my ear and was surprised to see a cockroach in there. I was relieved to find out it wasnt a poisonous spider. The doctor needed to drown the cockroach to get it out. She said olive oil would effectively get rid of the oxygen and kill it. I had to lie on my side, and she poured oil into my ear. It took about 15 minutes for the cockroach to die. The pain it felt up to that point was nothing compared to the pain I felt while the cockroach was in its death throes. Eventually, it stopped moving. The doctor slowly drew it out with a pair of long tweezers. It felt really good. Membership event Guardian Weekend Live The doctor said the cockroach was probably one of the largest insects shared ever heard of being in someone's ear. It's a strange accolade. She said if it had been in there much longer it could have damaged my eardrum, which could have caused hearing loss. I had only mild discomfort in my ear, so they discharged me straight away. Of course I kept the cockroach. I put him in a specimen jar and named him Roger. Roger the Roach. I've since learned that insects enter people's ears all the time. I would NT say, I'm paranoid about it happening again, but I'm certainly more aware. Still, I don't bother to wear earplugs or earphones in bed. There are lots of worse things in life than having a bug crawl into your ear, as told to Sophie Haydock. Do you have an experience to share email experience at theguardian.com?